Christmas, you can plan on me. Please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams i'll be home for christmas if only in my dreams well there we have it there's a few more verses to that but that's the basic song i think it just repeats itself but a lovely lovely tune and uh, very sentimental, right? Who, who wouldn't want to be home for Christmas? So what's the story behind this lovely, lovely Christmas carol? Wait a minute, you're saying, what's he doing? He's up to something, because today is Tuesday, not Friday. And Tuesday, he's supposed to do cooking. Well, you're absolutely right. You caught me. Well, I was challenged by Rob Random to participate in the Show Us Your Steak challenge, which is to raise awareness for men's mental health. And so I am doing that, and because of the way I prepare my steaks, um, I, it'll be going up Wednesday evening. So tomorrow evening, you will get my cooking video on uh, me preparing a steak for the Show Us Your Steak challenge. And I'm quite enjoying doing that. Uh, mental health is something that's very close and dear to my heart because I suffer from clinical depression and anxiety disorder. Um, being known to walk out of a grocery store because of feeling, suddenly feeling, uh, having, well, I should call it a panic attack, but just getting overly anxious and can't deal with it. And, you know, I've done that. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, you, a lot of people say, well, Oh, not you. You seem like you're really outgoing and outspoken. And Well, I can be, but part of that is overcompensation for, <laughs> for what I suffer from. Um, as a child growing up, if, if you had known me up until I was in my late 20s and somebody told you that you'd be doing a YouTube channel someday and, and talking in front of who knows how many people over a camera, you would have died laughing and said, not him, he's too shy. <laughs> so there you go. Anyway, back to, our, back to our subject matter here, which is, I'll be home for Christmas. Now, that's just the title of the song. You don't have to worry about me showing up on your doorstep Christmas morning. Um, or maybe you'd like me to, I don't know, but uh, sorry, I won't be there. <laughs> Gonna be here in my own home for Christmas and then Christmas, uh, later Christmas day, we'll go to my wife's brother and sister-in-law's home for a lovely Christmas meal. So I get the day off. Alrighty, back to our story. I'll be home for Christmas. Millions of those who once embraced this song, who reverently listened to each word and note and hung on every sentimental thought woven into the lyrics are now gone. Age has taken a mighty toll on the men and women who first clung to I'll be home for Christmas as not just a song, but also a prayer. For young and old, during the darkest days of World War II, for sons and daughters, fathers and mothers, grandmothers and grandfathers, aunts and uncles, I'll Be Home for Christmas represented their hopes, dreams, and prayers better than any other song, movie, or story. Many who hear this carol today may think of it being overly maudlin, but when it was released, it quickly became the most powerful song on the hit parade. The song may very well be one of the simplest Christmas carols ever written, 
There is an introduction, a single verse, and a chorus. Just 12 lines that innocently depict a person's longing for home. Yet the way these dozen lines moved a nation during the uncertain times of war, as well as the way they continue to move people today, makes this secular carol one of the most spiritual songs of any era. It was 1942. The lyricist, Kim Gannon knew the emotional toll of fighting a war on two fronts. In Brooklyn, the writer's home, not only had thousands of families given up their, sorry, I should rewrite that. In Brooklyn, the writer's home, not only had thousands of families given up their sons to the armed forces, but many had already lost their children in battle. Christmas, traditionally a time of great joy in, in Gannon's New York borough felt strangely different that year. The streets were decorated, trees were sold on corner lots, and Santas still rang their bells and smiled at children. But the war had cast a pall over the holidays. It was hard to think of presence or peace on earth when parents anxiously read the news and prayed that every telegraph delivery man would pass them by. To make it all worse, no one was completely sure that the United States and its allies could even win the horrible war. Kim saw the same gut-wrenching scenes play out every day. The prayers of frantic parents, the tears of newly enlisted soldiers saying goodbyes at train stations, the rush towards mailmen who might carry a letter from a loved one. The writer knew well that the news on the radio was both a curse and a blessing. Everyone felt the need to learn what was going on in the Pacific and in Europe, but fear came with the knowledge as well. Biting fear when a parent or wife heard that a major battle had broken out in the same place a son, father, or husband had mentioned in their last letter. With the coming of Christmas, the desperation of being separated from loved ones was even worse. Not only were families overseas families of overseas soldiers caught in a world of uncertainty and dread. So were many displaced rural men and women who had moved to New York and other large cities to work in the plants and offices. Like many of the men in uniform, the war had taken civilians away from home. Most were spending a Christmas away from family for the very first time and were homesick and lonely. When Gannon sat down with pen in hand to capture the unsettling scenes that surrounded her and everyone else in America, a, the cascade of emotions must have made writing I'll Be Home for Christmas very difficult. There was so much to say, so much that would be missed by those split apart, from, split apart by the hellish nightmare of war. Yet rather than try to cover everything, the writer simply wrote, in a straightforward and uncomplicated manner about the heartache of being away from home at Christmas. Short, direct, and sweet, the poem Kim produced in so, many so few lines somehow completely captured the emotions of hundreds of millions. Gannon's words were brought to the tunesmith Walter Kent, also a New Yorker. Kent understood the sadness of the holiday season Kent, who had already composed the sentimental hit White Cliffs of Dover, inherently knew what the song needed. In his mind's eye, he saw empty chairs at the table, mothers trying to smile through the tears as they baked cookies for their remaining family members. The unopened presents on the tree. During this period, Christmas presents were often very simple and tied to the tree rather than wrapped and placed under it. With these pictures family, firmly set in his mind, he sought to find just the right notes to paint them into a musical score. When he finished his work, he had written a dreamy, hopeful melody that was a perfect fit to Gannon's words. One of the true wonders of this song is that it sounds more like a letter home than a typical Christmas carol. Not only is there a real sadness evident in the words and melody, but a hopefulness as well. It's as if the singer were a homesick marine, soldier, or sailor, 
assuring those who missed him that he would soon be there with them again. Ultimately, I'll be home for Christmas left the listener with the final and urgent plea, don't give up, we'll be together soon. The spiritual nature of this song comes from its almost prayer-like message. Christmas in America had always been about family and remembering the one who started it all. Yet World War II had broken those bonds and disturbed the traditions of the holidays. I'll be home for Christmas eloquently acknowledged the, the hope that while things changed, given time, everyone would be home again. On October 4th, 1943, Bing Crosby recorded I'll Be Home for Christmas. It became his 209th charting single and follow-up to his holiday hit of, excuse me, oh, pardon, his holiday hit of 1942, White Christmas. The latter had stayed on the charts for 17 weeks during its initial release and re-entered the hit parade in 1943 and stayed on there for another month and a half. Yet in the midst of the war, I'll Be Home for Christmas received more airplay and generated more sales than did the Crosby hit of the previous year. It quickly became the most requested song at Christmas USO shows in both Europe and the Pacific. Some historians have said that for service personnel and their families, the only inspirational patriotic song that was its equal was God Bless America. Throughout World War II, Korea and Vietnam, the song symbolized and captured the emotions of those on the battlefronts, as well as the emotions of those back home praying for their safe return. Recorded countless times by scores of different artists, it had sold millions of records. But beyond its remarkable sales is the way the song has been embraced by every facet of society. As a testament to its powerful nature, even though it does not have a single reference to Jesus or the first Christmas, over the past 50 years, it has been used in hundreds of cantatas and church programs. Today, more than five decades after it was embraced as a World War II holiday prayer, I'll Be Home for Christmas stirs new emotions. Most of those who returned home for Christmas after the war have left this world for the next. Yet because of the contributions and sacrifices of the men and women who served our country during those dark days, they will always be home for Christmas in our hearts. Memories and dreams. So there you have it, folks. That's the story about I'll Be Home for Christmas. And I know I usually tell a groaner after these, but this story to me was just so moving that it would almost be uh, sacrilegious to, to tell a joke after, after sharing that story. So just remember those words, and uh, if you have a loved one out there somewhere, they're probably praying that in their heart, and you're praying they'll be home for Christmas with you as well. I'll be home for Christmas, you can plan on me, please have snow and mistletoe and presents on the tree, Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams I'll be home for Christmas if only in my dreams well until Wednesday evening when I'm back with show us your steak take care stay safe and God bless oh and a Merry Christmas. Frost and window panes, candles gleaming inside me.